Hey everybody, it's Dr. Jason Nobles coming to you from the Wellness Way in Green Bay with another episode of Quick Tips. Today we're going to be talking about the roadblocks to weight loss and why some diets do not work. So first of all, if your goal is weight loss, you're walking around with the wrong goal. First off, your goal should not be to impress a little box with coils and springs that's sitting on the floor that gives you a number that tells you your relationship in mass to the gravity pull of the earth. Okay, so let's throw weight loss or weight, whatever it is, let's throw weight and the number out the window. And one of the things I'm really happy about is that more and more often I'm asking people, are you losing weight just to check, are they progressing? And they say, I don't know because I threw out my scale. However, my clothes are fitting differently. That's what I want to hear. I don't care about your number. I don't, okay? The only way you need to weigh something is that if you're a cow and you are going to slaughter for meat, or if you have a specific competition where you have to weigh a specific amount of pounds or kilos, okay? So let's get going. So the goal should not be losing weight. Right? The goal should always be to gain health because changing your body composition, improving your body composition is always a side effect of improving your health. That's the way it works. So when we first look at this, let's talk about diets and why they don't work. First of all, diets, like it says, suck. Okay? So let's take a look at some of these because when you look at keto, paleo, Whole30, Atkins, Mediterranean, uh, eat right for your blood type, whatever the diet is, most of these, I'll be honest, I've tried most of them just to see what they're all about. And when we actually take a look at them, none of them are unique for you. That's the problem with diets, okay? None of them are unique for you, okay? So eat right for your blood type categorizes you into one of four categories. You are an A, you are a B, you are an O, or you are an AB. That means there's only four types of people walking around the planet. Okay, it doesn't make any sense. So eat right for your blood type. The reason that a lot of people have success on it is because you cut out a bunch of crap that you're putting into your system and you eat right, right? You eat better, right? You improve what's going into your body and you get a good result. That's the way it should be. When you look at keto, basically what keto does is take carbs down to close to zero. Anywhere 50 grams, 30 grams and below per day. You starve your body of sugar and if you have a bunch of excess sugar stores or a ton of extra body fat where you can convert that to sugar for energy, now keto will work for you maybe for a short term or even for a moderate term, depending on how much you have to give, okay? But keto is a very far end extreme diet. Your body does not do well in extremes for a long period of time. It will try to pull you back towards normal function. Okay, some of the diets that got it best, when you look at Whole30 and Paleo, Whole30 is Paleo, but Whole30 only lasts for 30 days. Okay, it's a diet, it stops. That's the problem with diets, they end and then we go back, okay? Paleo is nothing more than food. It grows on the earth, it walks on the earth, or it swims in the seas, eat it. That's it, plants and animals, good. It's simple, right? So when you look at the two Atkins and Mediterranean that came about in the early 2000s, they were actually very similar in that they were macro perfect. And what I mean by that is macros are fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. And when you look at how the body is actually composed, that's how those diets were designed. So if you eat Atkins or Mediterranean diets, then you're eating right for you if you are just walking around doing average work, okay? What I mean by that is now you have different demands on your body if you are working out intensely, if you are lifting a lot of weights, if you are doing some other stuff that needs excess carbohydrates to fuel your system and help you repair and recover quicker, then those diets won't work on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Your body has different needs every different day of the week. That's the way we adapt. We adapt to our surroundings, we adapt to our physiology. So, when we go into that, you got to look at what's best for you on that given day. And that changes every single day. So the reason I have a picture of the snowflakes is because you are biomolecularly individual from every single person on the planet. If you have a twin, you are a completely different human being from them. 
They can do a diet, you can do a diet, and you can have vastly different results. You can both jump on the blood type diet because you'll probably have the same blood type and have vastly different results because what's good for you is good for you, not necessarily good for your twin brother, your mother, your aunt, your uncle, or your friend, your BFF that you grew up with. So let's talk now about the four roadblocks. Roadblock number one is lifestyle. And here's the kicker. You are in control. You, nobody else but you, okay? Now, we're talking about lifestyle, we're talking about, if you look at the picture, our choices. Every single meal is a choice. Every single meal is an opportunity to go one way or the other, to get healthier or get sicker. No meal helps you stay exactly the same. If you put in what you need, you'll get healthier. If you put in junk that you don't need, you'll get sicker. It's black and white, it's that easy. There's no in between, there's no third road, third road going straight. Exercise is another aspect of lifestyle. How we eat and how we move are two very important aspects of our lifestyle. If you are a couch potato and you do zero physical activity, you can't be healthy. You're going to be sick one way or the other. That's the way it works. The body needs to be challenged. If you don't challenge your body, you won't change, you won't grow, you won't get healthier, okay? So what type of exercise are you doing? Are you just doing one standard type of exercise? Well, every day, like I said, has different demands on you. And if you do the same thing over and over and over again, and your body requires a different demand, you're not gonna be able to rise to that occasion. If you feel the need to run and run and run and run to the point where your muscles get weaker and weaker and weaker, but your endurance, you can run for 25 miles, but you can't jump over a squirrel that's chasing you, you're gonna get sick. That's not what the body's made for. So we gotta use our different energy systems. We need the phosphagen system. We need that system that requires an immediate burst of energy. We need glycolysis. We need to get into an intermediate burn. What I mean by that is run fast. I like this line from Incredibles. Run as fast as you can. As fast as I can, as fast as you can for a short duration, okay? Recover, do it again. Recover, do it again. Run sprints, it's easy. It takes absolutely no gym membership. You can go outside and do it on the roads. Unless you're in Wisconsin, be careful. There's a little bit of ice out there right now. So lastly is the aerobic system. Those long-term things, two miles, three miles, five miles, 10 miles, challenge the body that way. I love challenging the body that way. I don't personally love to run, but I will to challenge those systems, okay? So as we go through how we eat and how we move, there's also one more important part of lifestyle, but it's its own category, and that is stress, okay? Who wants to get stressed? You wanna get really, really stressed? Watch the news. We never watch the news. Well, we had it on the other day because we were watching the weather, and every story is a different shooting, a gun in a school, and this and that and the other, and it's just crazy bombardment of negativity. Okay? There are a bunch of different types of stress, right? There is massive negative mindset. There is looking at everything and whining and complaining and saying it sucks. That is making you sick. Fight or flight is a different type of stress. That means a bear jumps out of the boards right here and stands right here and wants to eat me. That's a good stress, believe it or not. I mean, it's a scary situation, but that's what the body is designed to do. It will reroute everything. It will produce hormones. It will produce adrenaline, brain hormones, everything to give you energy to go away. And when that stress goes away, everything comes back down to normal. But we can't live with a bear sitting right here. What I mean by that is your job, your family, people suck, all this stuff, all day long, roundabouts and whatever it is. If it's making you stressed chronically, you're going to get sick. Your body is not designed to live in one extreme or another for long periods of time. It will break down. You want to get really stressed, you want to have some real fun, post something on social media about guns or politics or vaccinations and see what happens, okay? You want to get stressed, you want to stress some people out, that's a great way to do it right there, okay? So another way is if you cannot recover, if your body can't recover. So example, for exercise. Exercise can make you sick if your adrenals are shut down to the fact that your body cannot recover you don't have enough hormones, you can't produce enough stuff to recover, and then you go work out again, and your recovery just drags you down. In fact, it starts making you sick. Exercise can make you sick if your body's in a place that you can't get healthy from it, okay? Which brings us to the next stage. 
hormone deficiency, okay? Not one single person has ever walked, stepped foot into a wellness weight clinic with complete and proper testing, okay? If your hormones are not breaking down properly, if you are deficient, if you are excess in some places, you will get very, very sick. Hormones are always the most symptomatic problem you can have, right? Decreased hormones, there's migraines, there's hot flashes, weight gain, cramping, bloating, you name it, it's associated with hormone deficiency. However, hormone deficiency is always caused by something else, whether it's an immune system trigger or whether it's a nervous system trigger, whether it's stress or infection or whatever it is, will drive hormones down. So if you are working on the rest and your hormones are still depleted and you try to work out or do all this other stuff, you're going to be very, very sick. Okay. Now, the last quick tip I want to talk about today is more testing. Foods, right? The right food can be wrong for you. And when we talk about biomolecular individuality, what I mean by that is my food allergy test is completely different from my sister's, even though we are very closely related, right? My test results and her test results don't match up at all, okay? So if I recommend to her that she eats something that's good for me and it's not good for her, that's bad advice. Don't give people health advice other than this. Get tested, right? Don't tell them to eat an avocado if you don't know that they're allergic to avocados, right? Because the wrong food can make us very, very sick, right? The right food for you is not the right food for me. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. The only way to find that out is get tested. Now, Gut health is very important. If your gut is sick, you're sick. Now there's different things that make our gut sick. One of them is obviously foods because the gut has to process all of our foods. Most of your immune system is in your gut, right? So is foods making you sick, causing inflammation that's destroying the environment of your GI. Now, infections are another one. Bacterial overgrowth or yeast overgrowth or parasites or something like that. If you've had infections, even strep throat or something like that, and you get an antibiotic, it destroys all of your good bacteria as well as the bad, right? Antibiotic means against life. It kills everything. And if you don't restore the health of your gut, you're going to start breaking down. And the last thing that can really destroy your gut, believe it or not, is stress, once again. Stress is so damaging to the human system. When it becomes chronic, our bodies cannot adapt, right? Our bodies cannot adapt to chronic stressors, whether it's food, whether it's toxins, whether it's mental stressors or trauma. If we stay in that state for a chronic long period of time, our body cannot adapt and we get sick. Okay? So stress. Everybody gets stressed. Everybody gets home from work after a stressful day and they just crave an organic salad, right? No. First thing we reach for, sugar, chocolate, whatever it is. Our body wants sugar. It wants to replace that stressor. It wants to make us feel better. Half of all your brain hormones are made in your gut, right? If you get a gut feeling, that's because half your brain hormones are made here. If you have an infection, if you have food allergies, if you have these other things affecting your GI, you can experience things like depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, and all this stuff because your brain hormones are right here. 90% of your happiness hormone, serotonin, is made here. And if you are depressed, the first place to look is your gut, okay? So, in summary, the biggest thing I want to get across is what's right for you is what's right for you, okay? Nothing, nothing, nothing else matters, right? It's all based on you. What's good for you is good for you, not for everybody, right? There's nothing that's universal. And the biggest thing is there's no easy fix, right? I have a lot of people, or I've experienced this a lot, where over 10 years people got really sick and they gained 50, 60 pounds. And they get upset when they slowly lose weight and they don't lose that 50 pounds over a month. That's not the way it works, right? Healing takes time, right? Rebuilding a body takes a lot longer than making a body sick, okay? That's just the way it works, it's just like a house. You can tear down a house very quickly, but in order to repair and build a brand new house, it takes a lot longer time, it takes a lot more attention to detail, it takes a lot more focus, it takes a lot more strict adherence to the rules, okay? So, get tested. Right? In summary, get tested. Make good choices based on that testing. And when it comes to stress, 
when it comes to things you cannot control, when it comes to traffic, when it comes to people on, in your life, let it go. I'm not going to sing it, but I'm thinking about it. Let it go. The more you hold on to that, the more that person cuts you off in traffic, you internalize it, it makes you sick, right? Let it go. If we can't control it, let it go. If you can control it and it's still bothering you, get over it. Let it go. Move on. Okay. So this is Jason Nobles with another Wellness Way quick tip episode. I want to say thank you very much.